in order to maintain a trade imbalance, we know that the Chinese central government needs to keep its currency artificially weak. And to do that, they essentially can print their currency and use that to buy US dollars. So what they do is they increase the supply of yuan, and they increase the demand for dollars, keeping their currency weak. Now the next question you might ask is, what do they do with the actual dollars that they bought with the yuan that they printed? Well, they don't want to just sit on those dollars. They don't want to. They prefer to be collecting some type of interest on that money. So instead of just keeping it all in some warehouse someplace, they actually just lend that money to the U.S. government, and they lend that money by buying U.S. Treasury bonds, by buying T bills and T notes. So that money that they use, that they bought with their printed yuan, that goes to the U.S. Treasury. That goes to the U.S. Treasury, and the U.S. Treasury gives the Chinese gives the Chinese central bank treasury bonds. Gives them treasury bonds. So these are treasury bonds. Now, what's the effect of this? Clearly, the Bank of China is getting interest on its money now. It's helping to finance the U.S. government's debt. But maybe even more interestingly. It is creating incremental demand for T bonds. So it is creating a demand for for T bonds, for Treasury bonds. Now, what does that do? Well, if you're increasing the demand for anything, that's also going to increase the price. So the price of Treasury bonds, of T bills and T notes, goes up. T bills are durations less than one year. But notes are durations more than a year, so the price goes up. But what happens if the price goes up? That means that the interest, the interest that the government has to pay on this, on this debt, goes down. So that means that the interest goes down, and I explained that in more depth in other videos. Now, if the interest goes down, that means that the cost of borrowing for the U.S. government goes down. But that's also the benchmark rate for the cost of debt in general. So in general, it finances U.S. debt, both the government and really just credit more broadly. So debt becomes cheaper, debt cheaper inside of the United States. This is Salman Khan from the Khan Academy for CNBC.